I remember uh, Shannon Sharp, he tweeted out that this was going to be just like Joe Rogan. <laughs> it's going to be just like Joe Rogan, but with me and Kamala Harris. Uh, we'll see. Before we do this, I do want to go to the comment section. I grew up in a middle class family that taught me the comment section is where I go first. Bruh. The real MVP is Shannon is Shannon's team for not turning off the comments. Yes, shout out to you, Shannon. We'll see if you try to take my video down or my stream down um, because you're trying to gatekeep the content even though I'm doing commentary. We'll see. I don't know if you do that or not. I really don't know if you do that or not. <laughs> we'll find out though. I haven't felt more unity in the comment section than I have the last four years. That's funny. Wow, the comment section is giving me hope for America today. That's hilarious. Uh, I think more people showed up for the comment section than the actual interview. I'm not gonna lie, when I saw this video go up, I clicked it, paused, and went straight to the comments to see what people were saying. I'm not even gonna hold you. I literally clicked pause and went straight to the comment section, and then this is exactly what I saw. Everyone commenting on how they went to the comment section. The comment section did not disappoint. <laughs> I knew we had it in us. It's so funny. This person said, uh, Shannon, congratulations for breaking a record for the most non-watched straight to the comments video. The irony of all of us running to the comment section only to find comments about running to the comments. <laughs> When I saw the Joe Rogan podcast, I went to the comments as well, right? And it was just a lot of people saying from where they were from. You know, they were just like, oh, I'm from so-and-so and I'm watching this. Oh, I'm from so-and-so and I'm watching this. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, but nothing like, hey, I paused the video and just went to the comments to see what y'all was saying. I wonder how much of this 64,454 comments, how many of them are about going to the comments? I would love to see the stats on that. That is just, that is just, whew, that's brutal. <laughs> that is absolutely brutal. But let's go ahead and get into the video. Uh, let's see if she can redeem herself. Let's see if this actually was like the Joe Rogan podcast. And I kind of want to keep a tally of how many times she says her little catchphrases. You know, turn the page. Uh, grew up middle class, uh, what's another one? Unburdened by what is <laughs> or what was. For her sake, hopefully she can redeem herself, all right? Hopefully she can show us that she's human and not just a robot repeating the same things over and over and over again. And not just a robot that is focused so heavily on telling us how bad Trump is without actually telling us how good she is. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm skeptical, but we will see. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Club Shay Shay. This episode is brought to you by. Let me get past that. <laughs> it's cast by vice president. She's the first black woman, Asian American in U.S. history. Black woman. Shannon. Come on now. Come on now. Black wear. That is a red dot Indian woman. And there's nothing wrong with her being Indian. Like there really isn't anything wrong with her being Indian. I literally was just at an Indian restaurant last night. Like there's literally nothing wrong with her being a Hindu Indian woman. To win the presidential nomination of a major party. She's the first HBCU grad, making us <laughs> proud. She's a Howard University alum. She's a member of the prestigious Alpha, Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. Here she is in person, Madam VP Kamala Harris. <laughs> Madam VC, how you doing? Uh, before we get into like the actual meat and potatoes of the video, why his pants so damn tight? It's making me uncomfortable because I feel like they're gonna just just rip open. Why are his pants painted onto his legs? I don't understand this style. Like, what is this fashion statement? Her pants fit better than his. That is just the it just it's make it makes me so uncomfortable to see men in pants that damn tight. Like, are you trying to be a baddie? Are you trying to show off? Your, your your cakes like I don't get it the suit too damn small I'm sorry it's just too damn small you you a big you a big ass man let's be serious I'm gonna need you to buy a suit that fits okay maybe not that loose fitting uh suit that <laughs> Kelly Rowland had on where he had her looking like Tom when he was dressed up in a suit suit uh from Tom and Jerry if you don't get the reference that might show how old I am I just I don't know I grew up they were still showing the reruns you don't need the suit that loose but I'm gonna need it to not be hugging your thighs in that way. It's making me very uncomfortable. Thank you very well, Shannon. How you doing? It is an extreme honor, privilege, and a pleasure to have you on Club Shay Shay. CJ, who's the producer here, when we started this journey, Madam VP, four years ago, 
celebrities, athletes, entertainers, influencers. Yeah. VPs and presidential hopefuls were on the bingo card. <laughs> you here, so I want to thank you very much. I thank you. When we have guests come on, Madam VP, we I can't get past the tight pants. I'm trying to, y'all. I'm trying to. When he scooted forward, I was like, I was so scared for him. I was like, you go flash us. Like <laughs> we like to toast. And what I read on this card, you didn't. You don't deserve this. You earned this. Being the first in so many areas, and you make us proud. I just want you to know, you make us proud. Thank for you. what you've been able to accomplish and we're 12 days away and we hope you have an even greater accomplishment okay so how is this exactly like joe rogan all right we're rolling yes, yes, sir. there we go <laughs> um one of the things i wanted to talk to you about i wanted to play this but we decided we shouldn't play it because uh it could get copyright strike and we don't want to get the episode we don't want anybody to have any sort of way to get it down sure but it was the episode of you when you're on the view and I think it was 2015 or 2006, like when you were running for president. Right. And you sat, you got introduced as our friend Donald Trump. That's right. Whoopi Goldberg gives you a big hug and a kiss. Joy Behar gives you a big hug. Barbara Walters gives you a big hug. They all loved you. They were all talking about how you're, uh, you, you might be, you, you might be conservative in your financial positions, but you're very liberal socially. They were, they were talking about you as such a favorable yeah. light. The audience was cheering. And then you actually started winning in the polls and then the machine started working towards you. Yeah. But it's, there's probably no one in history that I've ever seen that's been attacked the way you've been attacked and the way they've done it so coordinated and systematically. When you see those same people in the past, very favorable to you, like Oprah, when you were on Oprah's yeah, show, very. she was encouraging you. Last week I did one of her last shows, I think maybe Thursday or Friday, that was a big deal being on Oprah's show, the last one. And I was like one of the last shows in that last, that final week. And I said, boy, we've come a long way since <laughs> since that. What was it like? Now, I'm not going to act like Joe Rogan asked this like hard hitting question right from the beginning. I'm not going to pretend like that's what happened. But there is a very clear difference between opening up with some context about, you know, people liking you and how everyone kind of turned against you versus starting off with, oh, I'm so proud. We, we so proud of you. You earned this. You know, there is a difference, but I'm also not going to act like he came out the gate asking a hard hitting question. It's more so establishing context about how the public perceives Trump and how it's completely different from what it was right before he started I guess, going up in the polls back in 2016. Still not the same as what Shannon Sharp did. Shannon Sharp shoved his whole head up Kamala's ass and then sniffed it. I don't think Joe started the thing off with kissing Trump's ass. You you earned this. You you did your thing. I'm, I'm just, I'm so proud of you. Like, how, how am I supposed to think that you're gonna approach this with journalistic integrity if you're kissing her ass. You didn't even, you you just went straight to ass kissing. That's not the best way to show that you're unbiased, right? This is clearly gonna be a very biased interview. Whereas like, at least with the Joe Rogan one, we know for a fact that Joe really wasn't effing with Trump like that. He said several times before this that he was not a Trump supporter. He's just not a fan. Even with this, it's not the same. Now to be fair, this seems to be more similar to the flagrant podcast. Justin and I, we, we started watching it but it was just the same thing a lot of ass kissing no hard questions they were just telling jokes which i mean is fine it's just a waste of time honestly trump wasted his time on flagrant and kamala wasted her time on shay shay club i hate saying that it just sounds so silly shay shay club she wasted her time talking to shannon sharp it's like preaching to the choir you're not swaying anybody if he wants to make a fair comparison his interview is closer to the interview that trump had with flag i can't even say that word flagrant <laughs> he's clearly either unaware of her record or being disingenuous about her because i'm pretty sure if you know anything about Sheree Peoples, okay, I bring this up all the time because look, I don't care about a celebrity endorsement. What I do care about are the people you've affected. And Kamala Harris directly affected Sheree Peoples. She's a regular schmegular mother, single mother, has a daughter who was chronically ill and Kamala targeted her. Kamala in her office targeted her for truancy because her child was literally in the hospital because she's chronically ill. What do you expect her to do? Send her child who's like, you know, sick, I don't know 
exactly what symptoms you have when you have sickle cell but seriously symptoms that are strong enough where you have to go to the emergency room you expect her to just send her child to school even though her child clearly needs medical attention guess what that's called medical abuse and she would have gotten in trouble for that too i would much rather her take her daughter to the hospital when she needs to go to the hospital instead of trying to get her into school like it just doesn't make sense and kamala in her office attacked this woman for two years during which she lost her job lost her home her daughter had a stroke it's just the whole story is sad so is this what you're proud of shannon this is the record you're proud of her withholding evidence so that black men could be convicted of crimes that they have evidence to prove that they didn't do withholding that evidence we're we're proud of that either you're ignorant to these things or you know these things and you're just being disingenuous and ass kissing because you're just happy that she's there so here's to continued success and everything you've done and everything that you will do oh bless you and thank you and to you shannon to you, you for all the success and the voice you give to so many issues thank you for that thank, thank, thank you, you and much. cheers i will say this though i like her shoes <laughs> those little booties is cute okay i will i'm i'm a Hey, I like to call a spade a spade. Them shoes is cute. Cheers to you. Cheers. And I'm not going to actually drink this because I might fall asleep. And I need to do this I don't, I don't want you with to fall Barack asleep. Obama this afternoon. We don't want you to fall asleep. You telling me you going to fall asleep? Off of this little bit of this little bit of liquor is gonna put you to sleep. But you went on what was it, Stephen Colbert or what? What are these little white dudes? And you you drank beer with him, but you won't take this tiny tiny sip. Like you couldn't even pretend to just and put it down <laughs> you want to lie to us and tell us it's gonna put you to sleep the only way that's gonna put you to sleep is if you already liquored up and that is just like right at the tipping point of as much as you could take let's be serious so you'll drink with the white people but you won't drink with this black man got it so here's what here we are cheers to everybody <laughs> so before we get into the things that you want to do once you become president of the united states i want to go back when you found out when president biden called you Mm -hmm. and said that he was no longer going to seek re-election. Yeah. And you got that call. Do you remember where you were and what you thought when you heard him say these words to you? I do. So I was home. It was a Sunday afternoon. And my niece, her husband, and their two young daughters were visiting and staying with us. And I promised the kids I'd have pancakes and bacon <laughs> and everything. Okay. What? Why are we talking about pancakes and bacon? Sis, how'd you feel? Tell me what you feel. Hey, you know, Joe did ask a s slightly similar question when he asked uh, Trump what it felt like when he first, you know, got to the White House as president. He ain't bringing up no damn pancakes. What was it like when you actually got in? Because nobody really can prepare you for that. When you're running for president, you don't really know what it's going to be like when you actually get into office. What was the, what did you think so it you was going to be in like? in office or when I decided to run? So no, you, when you got in. Uh, when I was when in, so in. when I was in and won and was in the White House, essentially. Yes. Well, first of all, it was very surreal. Oh, you know, it's very interesting. When I got shot, it wasn't surreal. That should have been surreal. When I was laying on the ground, I knew exactly what was going on. I knew exactly where I was hit. They were saying you were hit all over the place because there was so much blood from the ear. You would know that better than anyone. When they get the ear torn Ears up. Ears bleed a lot. Yeah. Bleed. Anyway, so, and, and I was thinking the other day, when, when that happened, I really knew where I was. I knew exactly what happened. I said I wasn't hit anywhere. With the, with the presidency, it was a very surreal experience. And then after that, I had a puzzle for the kids and we were sitting down to do the puzzle. Okay. And the phone rang and it was President Biden. And so that's when he told me. And um, it was obviously life changing in so many ways. But, um, you know, I have to tell you, Shannon, I, I, at that moment, I knew what it would mean, but not in the detail of it, but I, I certainly understood the seriousness and the gravity of the moment. Mm -hmm. And actually, one of the first people I called was my pastor. Her pastor. This Hindu Indian woman called her pastor. Okay. I'm sorry. The cosplaying is just so ridiculous and blatant at this moment. You, you talking about you called your pastor. You're trying to do all this, like, dog whistling about blackness. Girl, stop. You don't got no damn pastor. What do they call the religious leaders uh, in the Hindu religion? Sis, just say you called your guru. <laughs> okay, stop playing with us. You know good and damn well you don't have no pastor. You ain't never had no pastor. You have gurus. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. But why, why the pandering? 
Okay, why the pandering? You already told a bunch of religious people at your at your rally that they were at the wrong rally because they said God is king or whatever whatever they said. But now it's like my pastor this. She ain't brought up a pastor this whole campaign until she got in trouble for telling those people that were saying religious things at her at her rally uh, that they're at the wrong rally. Now all of a sudden she going to the black church and she talking about she got a pastor and all this other stuff. Like girl. Just stop it. This this whole pandering to black people is so weird to me. And I saw a video of this other woman, this other black woman, and she was talking about how she doesn't understand why they're pandering so heavy to the black community if we're this much of the population. If you're saying that we're only 13% of the population, why are you pandering so hard to us? The math ain't mathin. I think there's way more of us than 13% and somebody is lying. <laughs> and that's basically the point that she was making. It was like, you, you can't be pandering this hard to this small group if it's really that small of a group. Let's be serious. But y'all, this black fishing is just, is just insane to me at this point. It's, it's absolutely insane. Thank you.